Okay, hey everybody. Uh, thanks for joining today's NTOP Live about field-driven design, specifically for perforations on a flat plate. Um, now, what is a field? A field is just a way that we uh, represent a data set over a given coordinate space. Um, in today's case, our fields will have a positional component, being the X, Y, and Z positions of our data set, and a scalar component, being the magnitude values of our data. Uh, over here, uh, you can see that my base geometry is simply a plate. Uh, so any of the functions that we will see applied here today uh, can be effectively applied to any geometry if you just swap this out. Um, closing that up, you can open up this group, which holds a few of the predefined fields uh, that we've already created. And uh, we can use these fields to drive the whole sizes of the perforation pattern that we'll be generating. Uh, right below it, we'll see a variable that we've named uh, field function. And that's just what I like to call it. Uh, but opening up that perforated plate workflow here and going deeper into the whole pattern section of the workflow, uh, we can actually see that we're, we're actually generating a column lattice um, that we'll be thickening using the aforementioned field function. And then we'll be doing a Boolean subtraction to remove that lattice geometry from the solid plate. And that's gonna basically yield your plate with that whole pattern punched out. Um, so to make this workflow work, I'm be, gonna be dragging this first uh, field into the field function variable, and that's gonna be the flat field. Now, I call this a flat field uh, simply because it applies a uniform hole size um, to the plate. So it's basically a flat value, um, but if I were to remove this flat field, I can do so because the workflow is looking at the field function variable container and not the flat field itself. So I can easily swap in uh, the next field in the list, uh, which I've named a one dimensional field. And the result is gonna be this one dimensional gradient where the whole size gets larger as you go from bottom to top. And how this essentially works is that if I open up this one dimensional field block that I dropped in here, you'll see that the driving component here is this plane. And if I show the visibility on that, uh, you can see that the plane is really where the gradient is originating from. And what we're saying here is that as I go from zero millimeters to 75 millimeters uh, away from the plane in this positive direction, I want the whole size to increase from zero millimeters uh, to three millimeters. Uh, now I've got this really handy tool called the field viewer, uh, which I can access using the F or Foxtrot key on my keyboard. So I'm gonna select this plane, hit that F key. Uh, I'm gonna plug in some values here uh, to better visualize this field. So change that scope to 300 and choose a contour interval of 25. And I've chosen these values because of that 75 millimeter value that I described before. And we can see that after uh, three lines or 75 millimeters, um, the gradient stops and just kind of plateaus and doesn't increase any further. And that at, at its simplest is essentially how fields can be used in NTOP platform. Um, closing out this field viewer, I can now kick out this one dimensional field and drop in this two dimensional field. And based on this resultant pattern, uh, you can probably guess that this field is, uh, the base of this field is just an axis that's piercing through the center of the plate. And if you open up this field function or this two dimensional field, you'll see that that's exactly what's happening. There's an axis right here uh, piercing through the center. And if I were to take a look at that field viewer again, plug in those same numbers, you're gonna see that field uh, radiating out in all directions. And that's the, uh, the whole pattern piggybacking off of that field uh, radiation. Um, now this is super cool and all, uh, but planes and axes are really just reference geometry. And I wanna put something real in the driver's seat of these fields. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and kick out this two dimensional field and drop in this fancy geometric field. And the result is gonna be similar to what we saw before uh, but this field is actually being driven, if I open this up, it's being driven by this pipe, which is a 3D solid. And the field viewer shows that for this field, um, you're gonna have lines radiating out in 
both directions, right? So rather than just outwards, you're going inwards and outwards. And that's kind of why you see this response in that whole pattern where it goes smaller on the inside as well as the outside. Uh, but the implications of this are pretty awesome. And that's because we could essentially drive these fields uh, with anything, right? Um, if I wanted to see what other objects I can drive this geometric field with, I can kind of just get rid of this pipe, drop in this other variable that I have down here, and I've just called it geometry. And I'm going to open up this group and take a peek at some of the other objects uh, that are here. So I've got this cube right over here. And what I can do is essentially just drop in this cube and boom, I've got this perforation pattern that now looks square. Um, but if you don't like squares, you can kick this out and drop in uh, this donut looking thing, right? This torus, swing that in. And your result is gonna be a little bit similar to the pipe, right? Radiating out and in, getting smaller in both directions. Um, but I've actually hooked up this donut to a coordinate position variable right up here. So if I drag uh, the position um, of that donut over there, the donut follows. And because the donut follows, uh, the whole position follows as well, right? So it's real easy to kind of manage and drag these components around. Um, but if donuts aren't your jam, uh, you can drop in this cone also. So kick that out, show this cone and drag this in. And it swaps in just like everything else. Uh, but this pattern doesn't really look super nice. I'm not really getting that nice pointed shape out of it that I'm looking for. So I can actually connect uh, this reach of gradient variable that I've created over here and just drop it into the in max uh, input of this geometric field ramp, right? And previously where it was something like 75 or 45 millimeters of reach before, I'm going to throw in uh, 20 millimeters. And because the reach isn't as large, um, that pointed shape is now going to really be more uh, visually apparent. So what if that three millimeter hole is also just something that's too small for us to work with? Uh, we can do the same thing with this maximum hole size variable. Uh, we can link it up to the out min input of that same geometric field, and we can throw in something like four millimeters uh, up from that previous three. And once we plug that number in, uh, we're going to see those hole sizes grow as well. Um, so you can really change all of these inputs whenever you want to because they're linked up to variables now. So it's really, really, really easy to just kind of modify uh, all of this however you want to. Um, now, but this is all super great. But at the end of the day, it is just design inspiration. Uh, you've got your reference planes, you've got your shapes. Um, that you're essentially driving, using these to drive a whole size with, but that's still going to be the, the manifestation of your solution. Um, so coming down to this analysis group down here, um, I'm going to take a look at this thermal analysis uh, that I previously did and actually use this analysis result uh, to drive that whole pattern. So I'm going to come back up to my field function variable. I'm going to kick out whatever I had in before, which is a geometric field. And I'm going to throw in this thermal simulation field. Give that a quick second to load. And now we're going to see that that whole pattern now responds directly uh, to that analysis input. So what you have now is no longer just the design solution. Uh, but what you have is actually a data-driven feedback loop that outputs a more compliant design solution. Um, so yeah, that's everything that I have today. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to throw them at me now. Um, I hope that this was interesting and perhaps it will design some you know, design ideas that you might have. Uh, keep in mind, as I said earlier, uh, this doesn't just have to be about perforation patterns in a plate. Uh, you can use these fields to drive anything. Uh, so from a thickness to a lattice, to ribbing patterns, to really just whatever you want. I'm going to give it a second for those uh, questions to come in. Again, if you have any questions, uh, 
please don't hesitate to kind of throw them at us and I'll be glad to answer those. All right, just give it an extra few seconds to see if any questions come in. Um, but if you do happen to not have any uh, questions that come to your mind immediately, or you want to learn more in general. Okay, yeah, there's a question right now. It says, are there other types of perforations like triangles or squares? Um, yeah, absolutely. So what right here driving this whole pattern, um, like I said before, is going to be uh, this column lattice, right? So the, essentially we're thickening this lattice uniformly and we're going to get a circular cross section, which we're using to punch out this whole pattern. Um, if you were to use um, some of the tools that we have in the software to kind of turn that lattice cross section into a triangular cross section or a square cross section, you could do the exact same thing uh, with that whole, with that shape. Give it an extra few seconds, see if anything else comes in. Okay, so that seems to be all the questions today. Um, again, if you have any questions at a future time, please don't hesitate to reach out or if you just wanna learn more information about NTOP platform um, as a whole. So thanks for stopping by. Appreciate you taking your time out to uh, watch this NTOP live. You guys have a nice day and stay safe.